And now, here to let you know there is no perfect movie, here is Tyler Wolf. Thank you, Caleb. What's going on, everybody? I'm Tyler, and I'm here to let you know that when I was at TIFF, I saw Boy Erase, and I'm here to let you know that even though it's no perfect movie, it's damn near close. I... Going into this movie, I knew I was going to have a good time. I figured I would relate to the central character and his struggles because I think it goes without saying that everyone's been bullied at some point in their life. I faced it quite a bit as a child. I was a very easy kid to make cry, so unfortunately from like middle school onward, there was no shortage of people calling me a fag or a queer or anything like that, so... I knew to some extent I could relate to what this main character was going through. But what hit me about this movie was just how uncompromisingly authentic the direction and the script and the performances portray the subject matter that just in the first 20 minutes my job was on the floor and at the end of the movie I just decided right there and then that this was going to be the best movie that I saw at TIFF. And I gotta say, it absolutely was. For those who don't know, Boy Erase is based off of a memoir by a young man who, at the age of 19, was outed as being gay to his parents, who in this film are played by Nicole Kidman and Russell Crowe. And this is a little more complicated to them because Crowe is a Baptist minister in Arkansas. And because of their religious beliefs, they decide to force this young man, played by Lucas Edges, into going into a gay conversion camp. And I knew the scenes in hetero camp were going to be a little bit uncomfortable, at the very least, because it baffles me that this shit actually exists. The idea that people seriously think being gay is a choice or that it's passed on by inappropriate behaviors or some shit, and... They don't have anything to back this stuff up, and the movie makes it abundantly clear that it's really just a bunch of intimidation tactics in order to make people convinced that they're heterosexual in real life. And in the first 20 minutes, you see just how this camp is run, and no matter how bad you think these places are, they're worse. It's like going to prison from 9 to 5. At least, that's how it felt watching this movie. And if you stick around long enough at the end of the movie once it comes out to general theaters, make sure to stay at the end where you see some of the real life facts that kind of reflect on the experiences that this young man went through because a few of them will actually surprise you. Some in a good way, some not so much. But anyways, enough of the personal politics, now on to the movie. In my opinion, Joel Edgerton is one of the more underrated actors who are working today, but I really hope he starts directing a lot more after this, because I did like his first film, The Gift, but in this one, he really outdoes himself. He does a very good job at using the camera to portray this young man's inner struggles. There are a lot of wide shots that reflect on just how lonely and isolated he is due to the fact that he doesn't really know how to approach other people. He doesn't know whether or not he can make advances on other men because it could get himself caught. And when he eventually is, even when there are other people around him, Edgerton uses the camera to make it clear that everything is not okay for this kid. He is being neglected by the people that he loves most. He's trying to make other friends at this camp who basically just tell him to give in to the pain and he doesn't want to. And I'm not kidding when I say this, there's even a running gag involving a car window that kind of reflects on the fact that he wants to open himself up to the world, but other people are telling him to keep his inner feelings shut and to himself only. And Lucas Hedges' performance makes it all the more engaging because it's a very physical performance. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue, and the majority of his scenes are him reacting to certain events and deciding whether or not he should speak out the truth and finally alleviate some of the stress that he's going through or keep it to himself and avoid trying to hurt other people just by expressing his own beliefs, his own opinions, and just how he feels about life in general. And in the few scenes that he does get to speak, there is one in particular where he does express his opinions to this one person that he's at odds with, and it was so intense and so well acted that the entire theater just gave a round of applause as soon as the scene was over, and I clapped with them. I don't normally do that, but 
it was just so authentic, so relatable that I just couldn't help it. Nicole Kidman is equally just as good. You spend the majority of the movie wanting to like her character because you can see in her eyes and through her expressions that she does love her son and is more involved in his life more than the father. And even though you want to like her, it's the fact that she does still side with the church and its viewpoints over loving her own son that make you constantly at odds with her, even when she is trying to be nice with him throughout the entire movie. And she's not a closed-minded person either. She does ask questions about the camp and whether or not it's authentic. She reads the instruction manuals that they give her son and constantly points out, this is not right, I raise you better than this, none of these things happen to you. There were no drug users or alcoholics or anything like that. And her arc, slowly over the course of the movie, is coming to terms with the fact that her son isn't exactly the way she originally wanted him to be, but at the end of the day, he is still her son, and he does still love her no matter what. And Joel Edgerton gave such an incredible performance that it was really hard to watch it sometimes because he is that typical villain who starts off very nice and polite and wants to connect with you, wants to help you with whatever your problem is. But once you start showing signs of doubt or regret, he will instantly turn into a complete asshole and put you down in any way that he can. And the sad thing is, that is how things work in camps like that. The second anyone points out any credible flaws that he has, he tries to change the subject no matter what. And the sad thing is, people buy into it because of all the fear that comes with homophobia. It doesn't matter if he has any real credible credentials. All that matters is that he gets to the fears that you have. And that fear is the fact that you're letting your own family down and that they're disappointed in the fact that you're different in the slightest way. I have two minor problems with the movie. For one, I kind of wish the other kids in this camp were a little more fleshed out because they do set up certain characters that have traits that are conflicting with the camp's ideals. There's one kid played by Xavier Dolan who is so repressed that he's really buying into the techniques that they're using. And I kind of wanted to see a little more of his life. And there are certain clues where you can tell that he was definitely forced into it at some point. He has a scar on his face. He avoids physical contact at any possible time. And that's really all you know about him. And I kind of wanted a little bit more. I wanted to know what it was that made him such an asshole, but in a way that it's tragic. And the other is that there's this one violent scene that is intense and does kind of serve the story into why this main character is so repressed, but it just comes completely out of left field. And as soon as it's resolved, it feels very abrupt. As you're watching this, you have no idea how many long pauses I've taken while recording this. That just goes to show how much of an impact Boy Erased had on me when I was watching it. The acting was incredible. Luke Hedges, Nicole Kidman, and Joel Edgerton, you were all Oscar worthy. Edgerton does another fantastic directing job, as well as writing the script for it too. And the themes about acceptance and denial are still so relevant today that it just makes you cringe that these are things that are still happening in real life. I'm going to give Boy Erased a 4.5 out of 5. The second it comes to general feeders, go see it. It's worth it by all means. Guys, thanks as always for watching and look forward to more TIFF videos that I have coming up. I'll be reviewing First Man very shortly and I'll be releasing a very special video about my TIFF experience and whether or not I'll be covering other film festivals in the future. Thank you once again for watching, and Caleb, tune us out. Be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more No Perfect Movie Reviews.